So I have this favorite cigar ashtray. It's a memento from a trip I took to England to attend the RAC, the Royal Auto Club Rally, way back in 1980. While I have a lot of mementos from my rally history of over 40 years, this one reflects back to a, an idyllic afternoon in a pub resting beneath the Kilburn White Horse in the North York Moors National Park in England. I guess several brews into the afternoon, I toss this really neat yet simple ashtray advertising harp lager into my knapsack, paid my bill, and left. Now, that's not something I'm terribly proud of, mind you. A youthful walk on the wild side, I guess. It, it's been with me ever since. For the past several years, this tray has sat on my front porch with the wicker furniture, where I will occasionally enjoy a fine cigar, not allowed within the walls of the house, you understand. For a gathering of gentlemen earlier this summer, I temporarily moved it to the deck in the backyard. That was like six weeks ago. This past weekend, I glanced out on that back deck table to discover, to my horror, the harp cigar ashtray was missing. Oh my God, who would steal an ashtray? Well, that one would be neat enough to steal. Still, someone would have to know why it was that neat. Where the hell is it? Is it under the leaves now reciting on that deck? Well, no. Is it maybe back on the front porch with, under some wicker furniture? No. It's simply frickin' evaporated. Why does this happen to me? Much gnashing of teeth, a little lost sleep, a memento of my youth gone for good. It's kind of like a saying goodbye to a loved one or an old friend. Still, it's just an ashtray. Now, maybe this has never happened to you, but it seems to occur more frequently for me, perhaps as I age more or less gracefully. But lost stuff seems to come back when I stop obsessing about it. We've even coined a phrase around our house about such occurrences. We say the lost item finds us. And so it was with the wayward ashtray. After the gentleman smoker on the back deck, I'd actually washed out years of cake dash and retired it to the role of the pocket residue storage device on my night table. I just not recalled that little detail. And so there it was, jumping up and down, attempting to catch my attention, waving its little harp logo, yelling, here I am, here I am, like a lost child. It was finding me in its own time. In the past year, I've lost credit cards, my phone at least five times, a prized watch, car keys so often I can't remember, and the invaluable harp ashtray. You know what? They all found me, but not until I let go of obsessing about finding them. Another example of letting the good things happen as opposed to trying to make good things happen. In the past five or six years, I can only think of two lost things that never came back. A piece of rally equipment I loaned somebody once upon a time and a cat that escaped, probably as an hors d'oeuvre for a coyote, both still total mysteries. But that's just two out of hundreds. Is it worth all the struggle when the odds of permanently losing something are so low? And as I create this video, my wife called me to tell me a check she had lost just found her this afternoon. It happens all the time. So now I just let go of the angst associated with the frenzied attempt to locate these things and wait patiently for the universe to return them to me, reminding myself that it'll find me, and it always does. Next time you lose something, you might want to take a deep breath and resist that frantic urge to turn the house upside down. Odds are, it'll find you. I'm Kim DeMott, corporate co-driver, and this is another moment of clarity. Mm.